Good day, good day everyone and once again we are back together. As you can see I'm going to be covering the November 2016 uh, grade 10 exam. Right, so if you haven't subscribed please just make sure you are part of this family and uh, of course you can uh, become part of the members, right? Especially that connect group, okay? Uh, where we've got a specialized WhatsApp group uh, where we can discuss uh, all things maths and science. All right, let's jump into this question, right? Uh, they say in the circuit diagram below, the reading on the voltmeter V1 is 12 volts, okay? So V1 is measuring across our battery there. And the reading on M meter A1 is 2 amperes, right? So that uh, it shows that that's our total current, right? Now, before we even get into the questions, right? Let's try to analyze what, what happens in this circuit right and see what we can extract from it right so we know that uh of course our battery you know this is the positive side and the negative side and we know that according to conventional current we're going to have the total current coming out of there so we know the total current would pass through emitter a1 right so we know that it means the total current should be two amperes hope you can see that right remember current is the flow or the movement of charge right until we get to this node over here right a node essentially is where two or three um you know uh yeah parts of a circuit uh, come together um in this case so we're going to have some of the current okay going to the six ohm resistor and of course, that will be the same current passing through A2, right? And of course, until we get to this node here and some of the current, let's take a different color, right? So we've got some of the current passing across that 3 ohm resistor and through that A3. And of course, until we get to that node. And so the total current once again will actually uh, pass through the 4 ohm resistor back into the circuit, okay, back into the battery rather. All right, so, um, right, now we know V2 would actually be reading the voltage across only the 4, uh, four ohm resistor, right? And uh, in this case, we know V1 reads across the battery. Let's get into the questions. They say to us, calculate the, the total resistance of the circuit, right? So once again, ladies and gents, I want you to see We've got, um, you know, mixed resistors here. So we've got that parallel combination, right? And we're given uh, the one is 6 ohms and the other resistor is 3 ohms. But we also have that 4 ohm resistor. So in this case, what can we actually say? Well, we can find the effective parallel resistance. So uh, we can use that product over sum rule. So let's call this R1, R2, and this one R3. So this will be R1 multiplied by R2 divided by R1 plus R2, right? So in this case, we've got, um, uh, you know, uh, I just wanted to change the color of this, okay? Perhaps to a darker color, right? So R1 uh, in this case would be six multiplied by three, divided by 6 plus 3, right? 6 times 3 gives us 18, and 6 plus 3 gives us 9, and that will give us uh, 2 ohms. Of course, you could have also used 1 over R parallel, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, right? And, uh, of course, this would have been 1 over, na uh, sorry, 1 over 6 uh, plus 1 over 3. You can put this in your calculator. Or you can just take the LCD, which is 6, and in this case, you'd have 1 plus 2 there. And so you'd have 3 over 6. Remember, this is 1 over R parallel, meaning that once you find R parallel, you need to now invert that 6 divided by 3, which would, which would give you 2 ohms. All right. So either way, uh, that is how we could have actually answered that question. Uh, that's 11.11.1.1. 11 11 but now, keep in mind, we've just found the parallel resistor. So 
the two parallel resistors have an effective resistance of 2 ohms, but we still have that other 4 ohm resistor, which is, uh, in this case, uh, R3, right? So what happens? That parallel combination, we know now that it's going to be the total current that passes through it, isn't it? So the total current passes there, and the total current passes through the 4 ohm resistor. So what does that mean? It means that the two resistors are in series with each other. So it means that the total resistance will be equal to 2 ohms plus that 4 ohms. And in this case, that will be 6 ohms. So we've got a total of 6 ohms, right? So that was R parallel plus R3. All right. So I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Right. Now they say to us, we want the reading on V2, right? You remember what is uh, um, what is V2 reading across? We said the 4 ohm resistor. Well, do we know the current that is passing through there? Of course, it's the total current. And we said that the total current, the rate current, right, uh, is 2 amperes. So we know 2 amperes of current are passing through there. So now we're going to say, well, for 11.1.2, that's V2 is equal to I total multiplied by R3, which is that resistance there. We called it R3. So that will be 2 amperes multiplied by 4 ohms. And so that will give us 8 volts. Okay, so the reading on V2 should be 8 volts. Right, now, in this case, we're looking for the uh, emitter reading on A2, right? So we know that current divides when it gets to this node, right? Um, uh, so let's say some of the current, let's say the current passing through there uh, would be I2 and the current passing through there would be I3, right? Now I want us to please note, ladies and gents, it means that the current I3 should be greater than the current I2. Why? We said more current goes where there is less resistance. So definitely we know that current I3 should be greater than I2. Why? Because uh, in this case, there's lesser resistance. Uh, 3 ohms is less than the 6 ohm resistor. But what are we looking for? We're looking for that um, uh, current passing through uh, the 6 ohm resistor, okay, which is A2. Right, so first we need to find the voltage. But that's easy, ladies and gents, because we already have the voltage across V2, right? We found that to be 8 volts. Now, if our total voltage was 12, and we already know that 4 volts, you know, are across that 4 ohm resistor, where's the rest of the voltage? It should be across our parallel combination, right? Please remember that in parallel, voltage is the same. So the voltage across the 6 ohm is the same voltage across the 3 ohm, which is the same voltage across the 2 ohm, uh, the effective resistance in parallel, which is that 2 ohm. So in this case, if uh, we've got a total of 12 and 8 volts have been used there, what should be the voltage across our parallel uh, uh, resistors? That should be 4 volts, right? But let's calculate that. So... Uh, to answer that question, we're going to say, right, so we want the voltage across our parallel resistors, right? But the voltage across our parallel resistors plus V2 should be equal to V1, which is the voltage that was given there across the battery, right? So we know uh, we found uh, um, V2 to be 8 volts. We know V1 is... 12 volts so it means that the parallel resistors should have a voltage of 4 volts so that's going to be uh, 12 minus 8 which is going to give us 4 volts right now we want the current okay uh, uh, the current across a2 okay so we said okay so this is going to be the parallel voltage divided by the resistance uh, in this case we call that resistor r one because we're looking for the uh, uh, current across a2 so that will give us four volts right remember in parallel voltage is the same 
So in this case, 4 volts divided by 6 ohms, in this case, that will give us uh, 4 over 6, or which is the same as 2 over 3, we can say this is 0 0.67 amperes. Okay, right. Now, remember, we had a total current of uh, uh, 2 amperes, and we find that the current passing through the 6 ohm resistor is 0 0.67. Of course, it means that the rest of the current must have passed through the uh, uh, 3 ohm resistor, and of course, uh, what would be that current? It should be 1.33 amperes, right? Why? Because if the total was 2 amperes and we know 0 0.67 passed through there, right? So therefore, it means that the current there is uh, 1.33. But that's not what we were asked. Uh, in this case, we've answered what we were asked, isn't it? Right. So let's go to the next question. Right. So... They say to us, calculate the amount of charge that flows through the emitter A1 in 120 seconds, right? So, remember how do we uh, calculate charge? We know that charge is equals to current multiplied by the change in time. We said it's our quit equation, isn't it? Right? So, the current passing through A1 that's the total current. We said that's 2 amperes. And we know the time is given as 120 seconds. So that's uh, uh, 2 amperes multiplied by 120 seconds. And this will give us a total of 240 coulombs of charge. Sorry, that are passing through there. Okay, right. Let's keep that in mind. That charge is measured in coulombs. So that's 240 coulombs and it should be a capital letter C, right? So that you can show that, um, you know, that is going to be um, the SI unit. Right. So let's go to 11.2. Okay. Right. Now they say to us, how will the reading on emitter A1 be affected if the 6 ohm resistor is removed from the circuit? Now, remember, ladies and gents, the moment I remove a resistor that is in parallel, remember, when I had that resistor, my effective resistance was 2 ohms in parallel. So we essentially had 2 ohms here and 4 ohms over there, right? So the effective resistance was 6 ohms. You remember that, right? But now, when I remove that 6 ohm resistor, it means that total current, all of the current now does not have a choice but to pass through the six, uh, the 3 ohm resistor and now into the 4. So it means the 3 ohm resistor would now be in series with the 4 ohm resistor. Why? Because they have the same current passing through them, right? So now, instead of 2 ohms, we will now have 3 ohms. What happens? What happened to the uh, uh, total resistance. So the total resistance would increase. Ladies and gents, I want you to please remember that when we remove a resistor that is in parallel, that increases the resistance, okay? The effective resistance of the circuit, right? Or let me say the total resistance of the circuit. But what happens to the current? The current would therefore decrease. Now, uh, so we know that the reading on A1 will decrease. So the next question, they say to us, we should actually explain the answer to question 11.2 without any calculations, right? So what are we going to say? Right, we're going to say removing um, the 6 ohm resistor, the 6 ohm resistor, uh, 6 ohm resistor. Okay, so there's my English disappearing. Resistor, right? Uh, in this case, increases the total resistance. Okay. But according to Ohm's law, we know that I is equal to V over R, right? So 
we can say the greater the resistance, the lesser the current. Okay, I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. So, according to Ohm's law, we can say the greater the resistance, we can indicate there by our, our arrows, the greater the resistance, the smaller the current, and so that current decreases. Okay, right. So, that is how the cookie crumbles when it comes to this question. And I hope that, ladies and gents, you're getting the gist and the hang of uh, what circuits is like. Uh, I hope you'll be able to get, um, you know, full marks when it comes to this section. Please don't forget to subscribe and like. And of course, you can share to all your friends and tell them that uncle is doing the most. Otherwise, from me, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.